Hello. Welcome to the midday prayer for the day. Today is uh, today is Friday, September eighteenth, twenty twenty. I almost said twenty twenty one, which is um, weird, but it is twenty twenty, the year of our Lord twenty twenty, and I am Pastor Jeff Foxkline, the associate pastor at Covenant Presbyterian Church in Madison, Wisconsin. I am uh, doing great today. It's a good day. It's a beautiful day. It's a sunny day. I'm going to open this window right here so I can see better. Yeah, it's a gorgeous day outside. And for some reason, my hands and feet have been cold all day. But that is not your problem. That is my problem and my fault for not wearing socks. I'm not going to wear mittens, but um, mittens would help that too. Why did I start talking about this? Anyways, every Monday... <laughs> All right. All right, Facebook people who are watching this. Um, I'm going to move on past that. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we, uh, we come to you live on Facebook with a, uh, with a prayer, um, a time to pray together at the noontime hour. And today you get me. Um, Charlie and I have been trading off Fridays, but he's not here today. So I am. And um, it's just a good day to be together. Uh, like I said, it's gorgeous outside, and, and the sun is shining, and, and things are going okay for me right now. Um, and we uh, and we pray together. Um, hey, Ben. Hey, Patty. I can see comments coming in. It's not a, often that I manage to see the comments as they come in. Um, but here we are. So today, I want to read you a story. Um, Chelsea Cornelius is preaching on Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40, um, as part of our sermon series uh, using the book Practicing. Uh, Practicing is a, is a great book about different uncommon Christian practices that we engage in, and, um, and the practice this week is loving. And so I want to read a story to you all from this book. This is a book called Growing in God's Love. It's a story Bible, and it is just so wonderful. And so I wanted to read you this story. It's called Remember to Love, and it's based on Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. So, I'm going to read you the story now. It's often hard to remember the right thing to do. Sometimes people write something they want to remember on a sticky note. Teachers used, used to pin notes on children with things for a parent to remember. Now they probably send an email or a text. Here is a story about something Jesus wanted everyone to always remember. Jesus had been teaching people about who he was and what they needed to know about how to live. A person who knew a lot about laws came to him and asked a question. Teacher, what is the most important commandment in all the laws we have been given? There are so many, but which one is the one we should always remember and never forget? Jesus was glad the legal expert had asked him this question. He paused for a minute. He knew which one was most important. It was very old, a scripture he had known since he was a small boy. It was from the book of Deuteronomy. It was called the Shema which means to hear or listen. It was easy to remember because he had been saying it twice a day all of his life. It was written on his heart and remembered in his head. Jesus told him, Love God with your heart and with your eyes and ears, your hands, every part of your body. This is the first commandment and the most important one. Jesus knew that the legal expert would know this important commandment. Then Jesus surprised him and said, There's a second one that is a lot like the first one. Remember to love other people. Care for other people just like you take care of yourself. It's a great story, and I love the illustrations. are wonderful. Um, this whole book is wonderful, Growing in God's Love. If you don't have it yet, you should really get it. If you have... Um, family with young kids, you should get it for them. If you are a young kid, what are you doing on Facebook right now? But you should get it anyways. Um, 
if you just want a good storybook Bible to read some good Bible stories for yourself, you should get it there too. Um, but yeah, it's a good story too. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's the, that's the commandment. That's the one. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. Those are the two things that we're called to do above and beyond all other things. And um, it's a good reminder. It's always a good reminder. It's a good reminder today. It'll be a good reminder tomorrow and next week when I'm feeling particularly unloving of my neighbor, I will love that reminder uh, once again. Um, you know, it transitions then into the, the story of the Good Samaritan. Well, who is my neighbor? Um, in which we learn that our neighbor is everyone and anyone and is especially the people that you may not expect. And that's the, that's the call that we're, we're, we're obligated to live into, obligated through our love of Jesus, um, is to love the people that we don't particularly like. That's really hard right now. We're at a time when, when there's a lot of things happening that we don't like. And so the challenge then becomes how can we love the people that we are not quite um, on board with? How can we love the people when we see them doing such unloving things, when we see them hurting other people? How can we love them? And um, I don't know. I don't know because I'm human and I'm struggling with it too. But we need to try. And, and that's hard and that's good. It's good that it's hard. That means that we're doing the important work. Um, so, yeah, I just... What does that love look like? Well, I look forward to listening to what Chelsea Cornelius has to say about it. I'm um, sure she has some, some great wisdom. The most that I've come up with is is loving is also can also be speaking hard truths as long as we do it in a way that shows compassion and um, works at understanding and mutual uh, mutual understanding. So um, speak the truth in love in, in ways that are loving but that show God's love to all and that promote an expansive view of God's love. I'm going to close us with a prayer. This is a prayer written by Jill Duffield, who is who um, works for the Presbyterian Outlook, which is a magazine uh, that is, um, it's a Presbyterian magazine, and she has been putting out liturgy for worship services through this entire pandemic. Um, and. I would just like to, to read the prayer that she wrote. This is her prayer of the people, and I want this to be our, our prayer of the people for today. And, um, and so we're gonna, I'm going to read this prayer. It's going to close with the Lord's Prayer. If you're at home and you want to say the Lord's Prayer while you're there, that is awesome. If you don't want to say the Lord's Prayer, just mouth the words and, and feel the prayer in your heart. Let us pray. Lord, we find ourselves weary, wondering if we will dwell in this season of uncertainty and stress forever. Everything feels unsettled and upended. Tasks that used to be accomplished without much thought require planning and additional energy that we do not have to spare. Children attend school in their homes or in buildings with multiple protocols for distance and safety. Parents attempt to work even as they contend with limited or non-existent childcare helping with online learning, and the anxiety of tending to multiple and competing needs. Many of us face not only unemployment, but the end of unemployment benefits. Others struggle with illness or feel overwhelmed with grief. In our worries, we call out to you for help, knowing you hear the cries of your people and respond with compassion. Your generosity to us is evident even in our anxiety. You give us a community of faith that upholds us in our weakness, encourages us when our hope lags and makes your love tangible when we feel alone. When we struggle to see your providence, you sustain us with your spirit. When we fear you have forgotten us, you seek us out and enlist us for your work, giving us purpose and meaning no matter our circumstances. When we are overwhelmed by the pain of the world, you reveal your gl glory in the beauty of creation. When we want to turn away from suffering, you send your Son, showing us your resurrection word cannot be silenced. Confident in your mercy and grace, we boldly pray for your people, desperate for manna in the desert, relief in the wilderness, a respite from their burdens. 
We pray for those reeling from natural disasters, especially as we ask you to provide for the victims of the wildfires raging in the West. We pray for those facing economic scarcity, those worried about meeting their basic needs. May those of us with two coats give one away, and those who have more than their daily bread share with those who have none, in order that all may know your manna appears new every morning. We pray for the peacemakers and justice seekers, the prophets and the policy makers, the caregivers and the activists. Enlist us all, Almighty God, to work in your vineyard in ways that participate in your will, and ways that so that all may experience the abundant life your Son came to give. We pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, wonderful. This was good to be able to pray with you. Hey, George, good to see you. And, um, and I encourage you, uh, as you go, um, it's lunchtime. And so I want you to look at your lunch with a sacramental eye. I want you to, to see whatever it is that you're eating, um, whatever it may be, uh, think of it as, as communion. Um, as I go off to break my own bread or, I don't know, heat up my own soup or whatever it is that I'm going to have for lunch, uh, know that the communion of saints is with us all and that God's spirit unites us and binds us together um, with love and, and joy and, and compassion. And so, um, so as you eat your lunch, remember that there are other people doing the same thing um, at the same time. And this faith community is united through, through common purpose. And so I will eat my lunch thinking of you all and thinking of how the spirit connects us. Um, I love you all. God loves you all, and I miss you, and I'll see you soon, someday. Amen. Bye.